Hey folks, welcome back to the show. Um, as you know, I like to keep you all updated on some cool learning opportunities when they arise, and there is none but better than um, the upcoming JulieCon 2020. Now, I know that many of you will probably get your mind blown that there's another programming language out there other than Python and R that people use to analyze data, etc. But there is um, and there's a conference on it, and it's a really great community, and it's a community-led conference. So I thought that people would be really interested in it. And the best thing is, it's free and it's online. So there's basically no reason not to go and watch it. And it has some great content um, covering a variety of issues, not just basic data science, but many of the peripheral technologies that go around the data science community. So I think it's a really great opportunity that even if you don't use Julia yourself, you will probably benefit from just hearing about the other activities and not the more like general programming community. I know I don't use Julia myself, but I'm going to go and listen to the conference because of the quality of the speakers who are there and the general content that's there. And to present this work, someone who actually does program in Julia is our friend Jane. So Jane, maybe you could introduce yourself and your own research interests. Sure, yeah. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Jane Harriman. Um, I just finished up my doctorate in February. I defended after many years in a PhD program in material science, where my research was largely within computational materials physics. So I was studying in particular um, phonons, phonon spectra and how uh, phonon spectra of in particular gallium arsenide and gallium nitride changed with temperature and pressure. Um, nowadays, I am at Lawrence Livermore National Lab where I just started a, a new position about a month ago um, as a technical consultant in the uh, Livermore computing part of uh, Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Um, so there I'm in a role where I get to I guess support research by way of working with scientists um, and helping them to use HPC systems and also become more familiar, not just with HPC environments, but also with some of the tooling that helps them get their work done. Um, so that's what I'm working on these days. Cool. And just to uh, go through the acronym there, by uh, HPC, you mean high performance computing? Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. Cool. And so obviously uh, you are one of the lead organizers, if not the lead organizer of JuliaCon 2020. And um, I thought maybe we could just sort of talk through the program. Well, maybe I, I think your, your own research brings up a very important issue about uh, this conference, which is that it's not just data science. There's also computational elements. It looks like there's a lot of deployment issues um, that JuliaCon also deal, uh, discusses. So maybe you could just sort of give us an idea of the breadth of subjects that are covered at the conference first. Sure, yeah. So um, as background, then, uh, JuliaCon is our annual community event um, for users of, users of Julia and developers of Julia. Um, I guess even, even defining the Julia community, I think, is important because often after JuliaCon, um, we'll get questions from people saying, like, how can I join the Julia community and that sort of thing. Um, and really when we refer to the Julia community, we mean anybody that's engaged with Julia or different, you know, Julia packages, anybody that's using Julia, we consider part of the community and we um, welcome your engagement and we have various channels like Slack and Discourse um, where Julia users can sort of troubleshoot things together. Um, but as a community event, uh, it brings together both people who are working on various aspects of the language, the people who are helping develop packages or libraries in Julia for various applications, um, as well as people who are using Julia as a tool in their own research in academia or industry or at a national lab, wherever they are. Um, and so that's to say that we have talks on, you know, biology and, and, and math and from econ, um, definitely lots of uh, sort of deeply technical computer science talks as well uh, for people that are really into like programming languages and, and their development. Um, so yeah, there, there are lots of different topics that you can find at JuliaCon. Yeah, uh, when I was looking through the program, you could definitely get that more uh, sort of computational flavor to JuliaCon compared to some of the more data science heavy conferences. So I guess w one of the bits that I was interested in is because I saw the heavier computational element to this. Is that because Julia as a something of a younger language is still in the development phase where, you know, there's a lot of focus on the language itself and the computational elements because the language itself is still being fleshed out and built? That I think is a part of it. Um... 
yeah, it, and if I understand you correctly, um, I think it's true that part of that is that the language is still very much um, growing and that part of that growth means that we, we have a lot of people coming to the language and, and making contributions and there's still lots of active conversations about design and um, ways that we might do things best um, for the language moving forward. Um, so that's part of it, but then I think another part is about the niche in which Julia is, has been designed for. Um, and that's to say that Julia really is a language for high performance computing. Um, and that definitely, that definitely impacts where it's being taken up. Um, because, I mean, if, if you look at the way that you know, you would, might express yourself in Julia relative to other high level languages like Python. It, it looks pretty similar, but what Julia offers you um, is, is really performance um, and speed and a certain level of, of power, I guess, and, and flexibility that you don't, well, flexibility maybe isn't the best word, but um, I guess greater control over the things that you might like to do with a programming language. You get some additional features in Julia that you just can't have in Python. Um, but there are lots of places where you don't necessarily need that. So it's really when you start to hit, perhaps, for, as an example, a certain scale with your data, um, or when you have certain performance demands, that really it becomes worth your time to delve into learning a new language when, you know, Python has already been there to meet maybe what have previously been a majority of your needs. So, um, so I think that definitely impacts who is coming to the language and, and making use of it. Yeah, thanks. That's a, that's a really cool distinction to make about why people are coming to language. So I, I do appreciate that. And it's nice having a high performance computing expert here to uh, verify. <laughs> that. So the structure of the conference is something that you've also put a lot of attention into. Uh, could you explain that a bit more? Sure. Yeah. So um, originally, JuliaCon 2020 was supposed to take place in Lisbon. Um, and, and often the way that our conference is structured is uh, that it takes place over the course of five days and we'll have one day of workshops, three days of main talks, and then one day of a hackathon. Um, this year we've upended that as, as pretty much everyone else that's been doing anything. <laughs> Everything has been sort of upended. Um, and so what we've done is we've cut the main part of the conference um, to three days where um, there's, there's no longer a hackathon. Um, we've taken I guess what is typically the three days of main conference talks. Um, we've moved those to Wednesday through Friday. Um, so this is, the conference is taking place July 29th through the 31st. Um, and we've tried to schedule the conference such that it will take place over times that will be agreeable to the largest fraction of our users, um, given that people can attend from anywhere all over the world. Um, so to do that, we've designated these sort of um, prime time hours, um, which will start at uh, 7 a.m. Pacific time. So that's, you know, 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern. I think uh, that takes us to uh, 7.30 p.m. in India, and then we're in the middle of the afternoon throughout Western Europe, for example. Um, so prime time hours will start then and uh, last for the following three hours until um, 10.30 uh, p.m. Um, in India, 10 a.m. Uh, on the west coast of the United States. Um, and it's during those primetime hours that we're going to schedule the events that we think will uh, draw the greatest crowds. So for example, our keynote talks will be during that time. Um, and then we have additional conference hours that will take place an hour and a half and an hour, or an hour and a half before and after our primetime hours. Um, so we'll have six hours of content on each of three days. Um, hoping to target the greatest number of people possible. So the way that we're, I guess, delivering this content has obviously needed to change. And so we have a few different platforms that we're going to sort of integrate into the conference to meet different needs, um, where different sessions and different types of talks will, um, will want to foster different levels of interactivity. So for example, our, our main talks, um, most of our main talks are going to be pre-recorded. Or when I say main talks, I just mean talks, normal talks and lightning talks as opposed to, for example, workshops, uh, poster sessions, and birds of feather. Um, those are our, our, our main um, formats or, or types of sessions that we offer. 
Um, so regular talks uh, and lightning talks will for the most part be pre-recorded, um, except for keynotes, which will be live. Um, but those things will all take place over YouTube. Workshops, we want to make sure that people have uh, the ability to watch things live so that they can ask questions. Um, we're planning to do a webinar uh, style session over Zoom for each of our workshops. And I should also note that workshops will take place prior to those three main conference days that I mentioned, and that we're going to distribute workshops over the course of about six days prior to the main conference. So we're expecting to have an order of 10 workshops, and we'll probably run about two in parallel during, again, those prime time hours in the days preceding the main conference. Um, so we'll be using Zoom for our workshops, we'll be using YouTube for some of our main talks, and then to facilitate social interaction and also help birds of feather uh, discussions, we're going to be using a platform called Discord. Cool, and I think one of the really important things to uh, point out again is, this is a uh, community volunteer organized event. So everything you just heard described is done by Julia Fanatics and you know friends of Julia. So obviously there's a really rich um, community there, a uh, very dedicated community to helping other bring other people into the fold and um, understand the benefits of this. So um, obviously you're you're offering a lot to you're offering a lot of things to different people. Um, and what um, and uh, basically sort of like what people might need different things as they're trying to like further in integrate into the community or uh, step up to the next level. And so I think that's really cool that you're you're offering such a wide variety of things, you know, the uh, presentations for people, the posters for people and show what they have, um, you know, workshops, the uh, things like that. So the interactive element. So um, as someone who does a podcast, I know that that's a huge amount of work that you guys are doing and pulling off a great production. Um, and you're doing it, obviously, this year for free for the community. So that's, I think, uh, something that's really worth applauding. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, we, we saw this as an opportunity in the end to try to make the conference as broadly accessible as possible. Um, you know, for the first time, people don't have to worry about finding money to fly to a given location. And so this is sort of our chance to make sure that anybody can attend. And so we didn't want conference registration to stand in the way of that. Cool. And on that note, um, the conference, the link to the conference, so you can register again for free, all this stuff, you get it for free, um, is uh, it'll be in the video description below. So um, if you just want to get a link, quick link to JulieCon 2020, you can check it out in the description. That's right. I guess maybe one last thing I would say is just that uh, this, this looks like it's going to be our biggest event ever. And I think that's pretty exciting and maybe something you want to get in on if you, if you haven't yet. We, um, we previously have capped out at, and I'm not remembering the exact number, but somewhere in the 380s um, in terms of number of participants events we've had at JuliaCon. So far, we have over 4,000 people registered. And uh, it looks like we have about 50 per day signing up. Um, so I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure not everybody's going to attend. That's sort of the, the nature of events generally, and I'm sure in particular virtual events. But even if a significant fraction of those people don't show up, it's going to be a giant event, I think. Yeah, so don't miss out. It's like you don't want to be the person who like the the world's biggest thriller dance happened next door and you didn't <laughs> join in, you know, uh, so there you don't want to miss out on this. Yeah, we're, we're now using FOMO as a way to uh, <laughs> sell JuliaCon free tickets. <laughs> cool. And so again, for anyone who's interested, uh, go into the uh, YouTube description below and you can find the registration link to JulieCon 2020. It's free, it's gonna be huge, it's gonna be informative, it has a great community behind it. So even if you don't use the language yourself, you'll learn a lot about the sort of, the greater ecosystem around a lot of the data science and, commu uh, and computing. So uh, Jane, thanks so much for introducing this to us and also thanks so much for your work that you do for the uh, computing community. Thank you so much, thanks for having me. And come to Julia. Bye. Bye. Hey folks, it's Glenn. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Pod of Asclepius. If so, please consider leaving a like, a comment, and hitting that subscribe and bell button for a small channel and every bit helps. If you have a department, a lab, or even just friends who would like this episode, definitely forward along. 
I don't have any of those things, but if you do, you should definitely celebrate by sending them an episode. We've got plenty of episodes on healthcare topics, particularly on data science and machine learning, so check out the other episodes on the channel or some of the playlists. You can also check out our website to join our mailing list or see our sponsors. Thanks so much to our sponsors for their support. And while the views discussed on the show are undoubtedly scintillating, they don't necessarily represent the views of our sponsors, the speaker's employer, my views, your views, my neighbor's cat's views, your cat's views, or anyone else not saying the words. In fact, they might not even represent the speaker's views by the time you're hearing it, so be sure to subscribe in case they come back onto the show to change their mind. See what I did there? Thanks again.